Hey everyone, it's Emily here, and today I want to talk about why representation in media matters to me. Earlier this week, my friend Mari, in response to NodeCon, made a really, really awesome and powerful video about representation in media and what it means to her. And then in response to that, another friend of mine, the Willy Sun, she made a video about representation. And I decided that I also wanted to make one and talk about my story. And for those of you who don't know, I actually have a disability. I have osteogenesis imperfecta, you can just say OI. And it basically means that I'm very, very short. I'm actually about 4'2", and my bones break very easily. So I never really thought a whole lot about people with disabilities and their representation in the media before. It was never really a big deal to me. But then I read a little book that you might have heard of, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. But I remember reading this book, and one of the many reasons why I loved it so much was because of how much I connected to Hazel and Augustus, and how they talked about being teenagers in and out of the hospital a lot. I was in my mid-twenties when I read this book, and it made me realize, oh my gosh, I'm in my mid-twenties, and this is the first time I have ever read or seen something in the media where I could be like, yes, that's exactly how it is, and it wasn't even something similar to my own disorder. And then, as I thought about it more after reading the book, I realized that I kind of hid my own desire for representation in the media. Because as I look through my childhood, I can see different instances where I try to find it. But then, I wanted the representation less and less. Because so many times, whenever there was representation, if there was any, it was done badly. And so now, whenever people mention to me, Oh, hey, in this one episode of such and such a show, a character or a baby or someone had the same thing as you. Instead of being really excited that there's representation, more often than not, I'm thinking, All right, let's see how this train wreck goes. So many times, the character that is in a wheelchair or has some sort of disorder, they're not really a person. They're like this put put on this pedestal of have this totally different outlook on life as if like they're not even a person they're like this higher spiritual being and that's just not true <laughs> or there were times i would see it and the media representation really was not that bad i think about tv shows that tlc did like the little couple or little people big world but then i would shy away from it because of people's reactions to them because people enjoyed the shows, but they would look at, like, the little couple and be like, "Oh, they're so cute! Like, they're puppies, not people. And then as I was watching Mari's video, I couldn't help but have flashbacks to my own life, especially when she was talking about auditioning for her school musical. Even if my singing and acting was up to par, in the back of my mind, I knew there was no way I would be getting whatever part I auditioned for because I was short. I actually once had a teacher specifically tell me that she did not give me the role because of my disability. Or if I did get a role, I remember my directors telling me, well, you got that because you're short and the poet is a child. Ultimately, my biggest dream is to see actors playing roles that may or may not have disabilities, even if they do have one. Or I think about in Glee and how the actor who played Artie was fantastic, and so I don't want to diss how he played the role at all, because he was, did it really, really well. But I also can't help but wonder, huh, so you couldn't find any actors and singers already in wheelchairs to play the role of Artie? Or I think about the actor Peter Dinklage, who plays Tyrion Lannister, and while he does a phenomenal job playing the role of Tyrion, I can't help but wonder, when is he going to be able to get a role, not because he's a short guy who happens to be a good actor, but just because he's a good actor. So, a lot of times, the characters I end up relating to don't have disabilities at all. Again, I think about Glee, and my favorite character that I connected to the most was actually Rachel. 
I didn't connect to Odie as much. But that just shows that you don't have to look like the persons who relate to them. So why in the world can't we have people with disabilities? Because surely if you make the character well, other people, even if they don't have a disability, will still relate to them because they're still people. And I was, I've always been really hesitant to talk about this topic because rights with disabilities and talking about my disability has never been my thing. Not because I'm uncomfortable talking about it or because I don't believe in it. I do, and I'm totally comfortable talking about it. But it's not my whole identity. When you ask me who I am, the first thing that comes out of my mouth isn't, oh, I'm a person with OI. But it's important to bring this up because how many other people out there are like me who they have a disability, but they're like, that's not my whole identity. But whenever they turn on the TV, if there ever is a person with a disability, their whole identity is disability. And when we go to conferences like NerdCon and we talk about diversity and my friends who go to the diversity panels and they say, yeah, you know, disabilities weren't even on the table. And now I don't know how to wrap this video up. Sorry. <laughs> Please leave any of your thoughts down below in the comments. And if there is a group of people that you think need to be represented, or if you have thoughts on this, please make your own video. I think it would be really awesome if we really got this conversation going. And that's all for now, and I'll see you later. Bye.